Hi, hi, okay. I just need some... Okay, I need this to work. Because if it doesn't, there is no talk. Uh, hi, my name is Moisés. I was forced to give this lighting talk because my friends pressured me to come here. Uh, this is my five-year-old souvenir from PyCon CZ. It was my first PyCon in Europe. Uh, it's very special to me. And this lighting talk is about Foxdot. Foxdot is a Python wrapper around Super Collider, which is a way more powerful but complex sound synthesizer. And since I like writing simple code, I write it in Python. So that's why I use Foxdot. You don't need much. As you can see, you just need pip install Foxdot. You need um, to call Foxdot and then it will open like this. And what you are hearing, if I stop it, this is the zero or default note. Each number is a different note. A list, it loops around. This is like a chord that you can make. If you use a tuple, it will play all the notes at the same time. If you try some math, it will break, as you can see in the stack trace. But if you use a pattern in the tuple, you can do the math. And this is the next note. Or you can just call stop in the instrument. You have more than one instrument. And you can do the same with them. There's also the play. The play is nice. You can change, uh, uh, like, each different character is a different sound. So you can make interesting stuff. And then, now is where it gets interesting. Um, I prepared this talk, actually, for EuroPython 2018, but I didn't have the time. So I prepared one year for EuroPython 2019. Um, you can set like some scale, t tempo, and everything. Um, you can write your song like, like this. But music is not just about sound, but also silence and the right space between them. So, if I remove this comment, mm, say like here, see if I can get this one right this time. something that makes some kind of sense. We can put some chords on top of it. And again, just need to make it schedule events um, and then it will stop I have 45 seconds yeah. I like this one I'll just go so you can make really some like more complex stuff with this so see if I can do it in So like I was saying, you can schedule events like this next bar. It just puts ahead in time and then it will get executed.
Thank you. This is fantastic. And again, this is not the end. This is the beginning. So if this was exciting, please uh, find each other and talk about this more. Uh, now let's get ready for, for the second lightning talk. Hello, everybody. Today I'm going to talk about uh, more technical stuff than music stuff. And it will be about auto-generated API documentation and how can you deduplicate your code base. Brief introduction. My name is Michal Korbela, and I'm working as a senior backend developer in Kiwi.com. About four years ago, when I joined our company, most of, uh, most, uh, of our services were written either in, uh, in Flask or Django. But uh, recently, we started also using Flask, uh, Fast API. Uh, the problem with Django was that we used uh, for request validation the Marshmallow library. And for the Swagger documentation, we used uh, the DRF Yask library. And uh, it gives you the basically dictionary, and you need to manually parse it. So whenever you would like to change at or add any field in the, to your API, you need to change it in three places. First one in the Marshmallow validation, second uh, on second place in the Swagger documentation, and third place, the dictionary, it uh, passed to your function, you need to basically add it there. So it's triplicated, basically. For Flask, it uh, was similar. We used Connexion, and uh, basically, you define there the schema in the op open up file, and whenever you would like to add uh, any field there, you, would like, you need to add it there, and also in the dictionary which is passed to, to your function. So again, it's on two places. And then we discovered Fast API, and it was beautiful. You basically define the model on one place, and you can use it for uh, validation, you can use it for uh, creating the auto generated documentation, and also uh, it all, uh, parse it, and gives you directly to your function, the parsed model. And I was thinking, can we do something for like this in all the, the other frameworks as Django and Flask? So I, I was looking for some packages for Django and I found beautiful package. It was called Django uh, Ninja. And it does pretty the same as Flask, uh, Fast API does. You basically define the model as a Pydentic model and use it for uh, uh, validation, all, also for auto-generated documentation, and also it automatically parses it and put it to your function. It dramatically simplified our services because instead of three places, it was only on one. So I was thinking, there definitely should be some package for Flask because Flask is a popular framework. So it should be also for that. So I started discovering for Flask, there was some flagger. It has 3.1 stars on GitHub but it supported uh, generating documentation, it supported uh, request validation, but it couldn't parse the, the request body into the model. So again, it will be on two places. I found another packages, Flask Pydentic. Uh, there was no Swagger generated, uh, generation. It could parse the request body, but it couldn't generate the Swagger documentation. Also other uh, basically packages, but for each something was missing. So I basically gave it up and created my own package. And I call it Flask Ninja, similarly as the Django Ninja package. And basically, it does basically the same as Fast API. You, uh, you define your model and use it everywhere. So no longer there is the advantage of Fast API that it does everything for you. You can also do it with the Flask uh, uh, Django Ninja and Fla uh, Flask Ninja the same in your favorite frameworks. So you don't have to rewrite your service into the fast API to get this advantage. You can use it also in your frameworks. That's pretty much from me. If you have any questions about the packages, feel free to reach me. And I would like to also share with one funny story that happens to me today. When I was at the registration, I got this badge. There is my name, but there is a typo. So I thought, okay, typos are happening. But after that, we find out that at this conference, there is a guy with the pretty uh, similar name as me, with one letter difference. Me is Michal Korbela, and he's Michal Korbel. I would like to really find him and change our badges. So 
please, if you are here, meet me after the talk. Thank you a lot. Oh, there, cool. So my name is Christian. Uh, I am currently working in the Qt company, and even if it's my paying job, I'm really passionate for this project. That's why I wanted to give a short talk about it. So Qt for Python, you can find me there. Uh, oh, the bottom part is missing, but yeah, you can find me later if you want to talk about Qt or other things. So every time that I start giving talks and also in lighting talks, I, it's really nice to me to see that how nice the community is. So for example, in my case, I am from Chile. I live in Germany. I'm talking about a framework started in Norway, and we're here. So it's really cool that how everyone is connected here in different ways, and we can mix all these different cultures and perspectives. So yeah, being said that, what is the, um, the main goal of Qt? Sorry. Uh, so it's mainly to provide a cross-platform software for creating UIs and applications that run on various software and hardware platforms. So in a nutshell, you write your code, you execute it in different platforms, it runs and you don't need to worry about it. Maybe many of you are familiar with Qt already, but for example, the major prob the, the most uh, big, like large like project from the open source side is the KDE environment. Who, who is using KDE or knows KDE? Okay, many folks, this was the first version, of course, it doesn't look like this anymore. But uh, since then, they are, have been using Qt. And now it looks like more, you know, modern and all these kind of things. But uh, yeah, many other places, and this is a couple of things, like <clears throat> if you have seen all these fancy, I will not say any brands, but these fancy electric cars with these nice panels, some of them are using Qt for the panel that you have there. Uh, automation, consumer electric, medical devices, whatever. So it's, I am almost certain that you have used Qt interfaces and you don't know about it, because it's kind of everywhere. So, for example, maybe if you're into animation, out of this Maya, or I saw a few laptops there, like in stacking mode, like you were using Telegram as well, that also is written with Qt, in the desktop application, in case you didn't know. And many other examples, but we have no time. So, Python. So, PySide is the official set of Python bindings for the Qt uh, framework. So, let's see a, a quick example. First of all, you install it, pip install PySide 6. The 6 is a different story for another talk. Uh, the most simple application, an empty widget, there you have it, really cool. If you want to do more fancy things like pressing buttons, then you do that like that. You connect the action to some method that does something, in this case, change the name, and that's it. Of course, if you compare this thing for C++, for example, you need three files for something that you can find a couple of lines for Python. It's even convenient if you are in a hurry. You can, also, of course, do also really nice, Q, uh, really nice uh, applications, like with the whatever style, so the sky is the limit for you. So maybe you have heard uh, at the moment about another framework that is called PyQt. So maybe you're saying like, hmm, but is this just another PyQt? Well, the answer was originally yes, mainly about license, because licenses are boring, but we decided to put more things into the mix. So what else besides uh, besides Qt, so C++ is, com is really uh, confusing for many people in the Python ecosystem. So there are many things like camel case, API, setters and getters, data structures that make no sense in Python. So we try to uh, go ahead with it and try to Pythonize, I don't like that word, but Pythonize a little bit Qt, and we start to do things. Like, for example, this is a normal code. At, at runtime, you have an option now, for example, to change all the API to snake case. And if you go further, you can even like uh, access properties internally, like without setters and getters. So maybe you're, eh, okay, that's all. Well, not really. There are many, a lot of things like, you know, we love Python because of tooling and automating. There are many things complementary to that. You can use NumPy arrays also in the API that is not designed for NumPy arrays because it's C++. And of course, uh, at some point, a project told us, hey, we want this method. Can you add it? Like, Sure, we can break API for you. So if you have an open source uh, project and you want to help us break in API, please speak up. Also, a really cool thing is one of the largest projects that is compatible with PyPy. We spent a lot of time doing this. So in case PyPy, PyPy is your jam, you can also use PySat with PyPy. So where are we going with this? With, uh, the next steps are mobile development. We have already some proof of concepts uh, with this. Uh, that a lot of people is trying to use this with Raspberry Pis and MCUs. Um, as you can see here all the, the folks with the micro read and stuff. Um, also deployment no, like in a better way because most of the alternatives now are a little bit painful to use. And also we have been doing some research since, of course, they released this year's PyScript because Qt is compatible with WebAssembly. PyScript is bringing Python to browser, so it's kind of like 
the sweet spot in the middle. So that's it. Uh, maybe you can give it a try. If you've installed PySide 6, you can find there the official uh, wiki page and the documentation page. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I have stickers, if you like stickers. And uh, you can reach me out. Thanks. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Jakub Rep. And first question, uh, how many engineers do you need to like run your computer screen on presentation, like maybe zero because our community girl help us. So uh, I'm here uh, talking, uh, I want to talk about more like a serious thing, uh, especially about science and Python, like it's really interesting. And I'm here to talk about uh, MISI challenges. Uh, so what is MISI? Uh, actually this. Uh, it's some society, magic, medical image, computing and computer assisted intervention society. I don't know what does it mean, but let's get to the, to the challenges. Those are like those, uh, their um, websites where you can find them. Uh, you can later find me in Kiwi stand. It doesn't matter right now. But challenges, they are really, really like cool. If you are interested in data science, working with um, deep learning and image uh, segmentation and those stuff, uh, that's the way how you can participate, part participate in those challenges. You can learn there and you can like become more popular, let's say. So they, uh, they offer various challenges, especially about, uh, they are focused on med medical image uh, data mining. Um, I'm talking about segmentation, about classification. And what, what is, what's interesting on that is that um, uh, you are you can get in touch with the real data like you can really get a uh, 3d scan of, uh, of of brain or of liver and do of, and other like body parts uh, and you can really participate on uh, like uh, real medical uh, challenges uh, so what what are your opportunities uh, for example first thing is like I'm a student so I'm uh, I did uh, one uh, missile challenge for my uh, master thesis. So this is like, like one big opportunity which I would like to ask, um, maybe not, not ask, but um, introduce this uh, challenge for may maybe professors. It's like really interesting. Also, you can get in touch uh, if you are not student, but uh, like if you are working, if you are uh, out of the school, you can also get in touch with scientists and more in the science and there's in like two steps. First step is like through the, through the challenge, you can like actively talk with uh, um, like you will have opportunity to talk with uh, doctors and those stuff and also after the challenge if you will be like really good then uh, you, you will get opportunity from uh, challenge organizers uh, so you can really help them to develop something bigger also uh, after that if you are not interesting in uh, if you are interested in writing articles but you don't want to uh, this challenge uh, force force you to create some articles um, uh, like uh, approved. Uh, also, they have good prizes for that and free tickets for conferences because that MISI uh, it's like society or like um, company. Where, uh, they are also organizing uh, conferences uh, around the world. And uh, right now, ne next week, it will be in uh, Singapore, I think. Uh, that's like basically all. I just want to like show you that something like that uh, exists. And if you will have any questions, you can find me on my email or right now through the whole weekend at Kiwi Stand. And that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Hi. Uh, if you couldn't come to the panel workshop or you would just like to watch it again, you can go to the GitHub Concretely to Michel Etavets and <laughs> Okay, you cannot make a slide. Yeah, five minutes, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm doing it. Did it work? Oh, good. And go to panel workshop. You can find all the ma materials here. Mm. And at the folder index.
you can find all the links to the notebooks. And also at the last link, it reroutes you to the last notebook and you can find their links to the um, videos about those workshops. So that's all, thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Martin and I come here from Czech Republic. So uh, I use the train because I like it. And I was quite curious uh, how it uh, looks like a countryside along the, the train, or along the, the rails. The rails. Uh, I'm, I really love map, maps and this is view uh, how it looks like a train close to border cross. It's just a meadow, some river, and the rails. Uh, but when I've been sitting in, in the train, it's, it's, it actually looks like this. There is some road, maybe just temporary, but there exists. And I can imagine that uh, somebody would like to take a bike and uh, make a trip along uh, because it's flat and easy to ride. And I'd like, I like fixing things. So when I look at this map, uh, it's a problem because the uh, temporary um, road is not there. So uh, anybody have an option to improve that map. Uh, you don't have to be registered anything. Uh, if you're using uh, this service called map.cz that uh, works worldwide, uh, not only for uh, Czech Republic era. Here is a button that you can report uh, some mistake in the map. You can even draw something, put some description, and if you fill also um, the email address mm. input value, uh, you will be notified when uh, the map will be fixed. But maps.cz is not only one uh, service uh, that provides uh, maps uh, for others. Several years ago, uh, I discovered that uh, improving OpenStreetMaps is very fun for me, and uh, I'm also a com contributor for OpenStreetMaps, and they also provide a way uh, that you can uh, report something that uh, is wrong in their, uh, their vectors. Uh, just navigate to openstreetmap.org and uh, here is a button called Add a Note. When you, oh, when you click it, uh, you can move that point uh, that refers some location that you want to say that um, there is something wrong and put a description. Uh, any user uh, who uh, opens uh, this web page uh, can anonymously uh, edit this note and other uh, OpenStreetMap contributors uh, can resolve it or mm, start some discussion. There is another, oh, how can I close it? Uh, there is just one last thing that I want to mention. Um, if you open map.cz uh, website for some abroad country, um, you can see that, uh, that they provide uh, a lot of data. But this data, uh, they are not their own uh, in uh, this case. Um, In the bottom line, uh, 
there you can see that uh, these vectors are um, actually imported from OpenStreetMaps. So if you want to improve uh, maps.cz, uh, you can do it right away uh, in OpenStreetMap and uh, mapit.cz will import it afterwards. Thanks. Hello, so uh, hello, I'm Chuck. Um, so I'm just gonna spend five minutes telling you this, uh, which I don't need five minutes, actually three minutes is gonna be enough. So um, uh, this is the new thing that I discovered, uh, is PyScript. Uh, I don't know whether, how many of you have heard about PyScript before? Some of you, most of you, good. Uh, so PyScript is uh, basically let you write Python in, uh, in HTML files, so it will run in the browser. Uh, so if you want to know more, uh, I have a talk tomorrow. Um, but anyway, uh, so since like, now we can put a Python in the HTML file, I can basically um, put the, the, the Python, you know, this, is, this, this will run Python actually. Uh, this is a, a REPL uh, that is in the uh, presentation slides. Uh, the tr trick is because I use uh, the slides.com, which is Review.js, an open source um, JavaScript uh, presentation slice library that you could basically create presentation slides with HTML. So that's how I uh, merged the two together. So now I can run Python in our presentation slice. So, uh, oops. sorry, the, the, uh, the, the um, you know, what, what do you call that? Like the CSS is still a bit like, Funny because they don't like each other yet. So, uh, but I'm going to like just maybe print hello world. Uh, ah, okay. And then uh, you can just run it by shift enter. And it will print hello world. <laughs> so um, that's one way of doing it. But uh, you look at this, it's like, oh, it's still a bit like primitive, right? Like, can you do like cooler stuff with it? Oh yes, of, of course you can. So um, because of PyScript, you can also, uh, so this is one of the things that I was uh, going to show you tomorrow that I have uh, put in a, uh, basically a, uh, you know, using pandas and D, D3, now you can use D3 in HTML uh, with Python, um, that you can create an interactive uh, presentation. So what I have here is that I have all the ice cream flavor, because for those of you who know me, I love ice cream. So these are all the Ben and Jerry's ice cream flavor and um, I create these uh, interactive kind of buttons that you could filter out which flavor, because there's too much I can't choose, right? So I maybe I can, for example, I like some cherries flavor today, I click on it and then I can see that, okay, now there's two and one of them has a high rating, so maybe I, I'm gonna try that. Um, or if you feel like chocolate today, you can also choose chocolate, um, that is a chocolate flavor, there's still a lot of chocolate flavors uh, from Ben and Jerry's. So, uh, so that's that's it. Like that's how you can like run Python. Oh, actually, I think that would be more fun if I can show you the. Oops, sorry. Wow, it got like. Oops. Ah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what Chrome do this like fun funny thing with me. Uh, I think fun functional optional, option. No. Ah, okay. Now I can do it. Let me see if I can show you the source code of this thing. So, um, let's see. View since I have time. <laughs> uh, view source. Code. It's so small. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, view source, yes. So uh, let me make it bigger for you. Okay, so basically, like like you said, see, all these are all like, you know, put it in HTML page, and then I use PyScript here, so that's why I have the PyScript. I can, um, so where is it, import uh, pandas, so here, there. These are all like Python script, right? Hello, <laughs> Python, in HTML files. And then, um, yeah, like basically I can I can use pandas. You can see some of these familiar things. If, for those of you pandas user here, hello. So uh, you can see that I've used pandas.readcsv. <laughs> so you can now do this uh, on a browser and put it in your presentation slides. Um, so basically that's, uh, that's my uh, talk. So yeah, it, now it looks funny. But anyway, before I go, I still have one minute. I want to tell you about PyjamasConf. Uh, so Moses know about it because he's one of the founders of PyjamasConf. And I also got stickers, so come talk to me. CFP is now open. So um, yeah, please submit all your beautiful proposals. Thank you. So, hello, welcome everybody. My name is Andre, and I'm broadcast engineer, one of part of the team responsible for uh, live stream of this event. Uh, I have one question for you. Do you know what is this? <laughs> Perfect. And have you ever wondered what will happen with all those cables after the show? 
we need to make them this again. <laughs> <laughs> and then bring it home. But does this look good for you? Depends, okay, okay, very good answer. Because now it's, yeah, it looks fine, looks ring, okay? But when I throw it, you see what happened? No. No. Oh, yeah, exactly. And if you are in hurry and you need to set up another show, you are like, ah, oh, damn it, I have to say that again. Okay, so I will show you proper way how to wrap cables. <laughs> so, now it was like this, yeah, we can wrap it, hurry, yeah, we can go home, finally get some sleep after five days, yeah, perfect. Okay, what I did, looks about fine, but it's still wrong, yeah? Oh, damn, again. So, you can do something which looks really similar, but it's different. You see how bad it goes now, because it's, oh, it's a few times wrapped wrong. Okay, we have to fight with it. Next time I will show it in slow motion. Now it's just wrapping, you know, I want to go home as well. <laughs> okay, so now it looks really similar than before. But the real difference is, now it's straight cable. <laughs> Thank you. In English, it's called over, ender, you see this magic, okay? And if you do it like this, one over, one ender, you will get perfectly straight cables all the time. One more thing you need to, to keep it in this form, velcro strap. Get yourself hungry of them, they will help you a lot. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you. So over and under, that's the magic. Yep. Uh, super cool, thank you. Mikrobit je programovateľný počítač, ktorý ti dovolí prepojiť informatiku s kreativitou. Dá sa programovať veľmi jednoducho a ovládať tak, aby robil presne to, čo chceš. O pár minút sme zvládli rozsvietiť vlastný obrázok na displeji a o chvíľu sme už obrázky diálkovo prepínali druhým mikrobitom. Mikrobit má v sebe aj super vychytávky, ako sú tlačidlá, senzor pohybu, kompas a teplomé. K mikrobitu ale môžeš pripojiť množstvo ďalších vecí. Tu programujeme, aká animácia sa nám má ukázať na LED pásiku. Ja som na ňom naprogramovala dúhu. Teraz programujeme podľa nôd kohútika Jarabeho. Najlepšie na mikrobite je, že si viem vytvoriť napríklad blikajúceho robota alebo gitaru, ktorú ovládam tak, že ňou zatraciem, alebo futbalovú bránku, kde mi mikrobit počíta, koľko gólov som dala, alebo kúlové svietiace topánky a tisíc z ďalších vecí, ktoré ešte len vymyslím. Mikrobit je hračka, ktorú schováš do dlane a vytvoríš z nej čokoľvek. Tak čo s ňou spravíš ty? Každých 60 sekúnd si 28 tisíc ľudí predplatí službu Netflix. Odošle sa 197 miliónov e-mailov, stiahne sa 414 tisíc aplikácií a ukradne niekoľko tisíc hesiel. Na internete sa toho deje veľa. 
a všetko najdôležitejšie sa dozviete na Živé SK. Živé SK. Technológie ľudskou rečou.